All right. Fatty here. Hey, uh, little Billy Longstocking. Uh, to the butthurt fatty that e- emailed you last week, as a fat person myself, I find your take on the subject hilarious. Well, thank you, because I'm not against you. I'm rooting for you. You know, but I, I, my job is to make fun of shit. So, you know, that is, that is what it is. He said, if slash when, or he or she said this, a joke hits close to home, that's because of my own insecurities in the truth that you're telling. If anything, you're motivating us fatties to make better decisions and the ones that take offense need to waddle to a mirror and take a look. Yeah, I, that's what's hilarious. It's like what I'm doing is not fatal. What they're doing is fatal. Um, if your pale, freckled, red face can improve, why can't I? <laughs> yeah, dude. If I can try to, yeah, if I can become better at something, look at the way I look. Yeah, exactly. That gives everybody hope. Anyway, you could, this person says, I'm going to start this 30-day increment deal you do and bite off small chunks until I'm a less fatter fuck. Um I'll laugh at you ridiculing the majority of society while I do it, including the butthurt fatty that emailed their complaint while sobbing through another half gallon of Bluebell. Uh, go fuck yourself. Well, there you go. That's the attitude. It's the attitude you got to fucking have. Um, and good luck to you, sir or ma'am. I am rooting for you. And I'm even rooting for the fucking sad fatty who fucking emailed me last week. Sorry, trying to stay hydrated here. Uh, your desire to stay fit is privilege. Oh, God. Oh, please, please, with your flat screen TV, tell me how privileged my flat screen thing is. Oh, God. Are they going to say the obvious thing that in starving countries that just getting nutrition? This is going to, oh, my God. This, I'm really going to have to grit my teeth for this. Dear Bill, I'm writing to inform you that your journey to fitness is racist and privilege laden. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was because I was an old dad and I had a responsibility that I was going to bring kids into the world in late in life as I did to stick around long enough to raise them so they're not bad people. The ability to be a specific form or size is inherently determined by what you find attractive in yourself. Well, I'm not smart enough for that sentence. Let me try to slow down. The ability to be a specific form or size is inherently determined by what you find attractive in yourself. I suppose you've dated women from cold countries that require weight for survival. Well, I grew up on the East Coast and we had Nor'easters. It's easy with the colonial perspective you have. Oh, God, here's all the buzzwords. The colonial perspective you have to not see this. Oh, well, thank you for, for squeegeeing my third eye, oh, genius. You wouldn't last in the tundra where my grandparents grew up. They were not skinny Germans like yourself. <laughs> they were strong and had pride. Oh, wait a second. So are you saying Germans aren't strong and don't have pride? Now, didn't you call me racist earlier? Uh, When you mentioned being bald as a negative feature, you were insulting the very weak genes your race has. Look at this. This is the classic. uh, This is the classic woke liberal being reverse. Well, not everybody who's German is bald. You fucking moron. It's called having a sense of humor about yourself. Please consider this and make changes to your life accordingly. Oh, my God. I mean, that is just stuck the landing for fucking pompous impressed with yourself liberal bullshit yeah well all right wow wow that was that wow that was a clap of thunder wasn't it okay anyway yeah i'm sure that's why they survived up there because they were fat fucks acting like they're fucking walruses (laughs) i think dressing warmly you know and not putting all that extra burden on your heart is probably a better way to survive. But evidently, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a fat fuck because I can't stop eating cookies. I'm just trying to stay warm. All right. Yeah, that was, that was mind-blowing. Um, advice. Uh, please consider this and make changes to your life accordingly. Oh, my God. I mean, just like, 
the the fucking I, I am a lefty and I am I cannot fucking believe maybe it always existed just under the surface and that's what the people the red side was always pointing out but uh I guess, I guess the left has always been really fucking self congratulatory no but the the right does it too if you ever listen to Ted Nugent there's another tip from your old uncle Ted <laughs> like he has the whole fucking thing figured out. What a way to go through life. <laughs> I always thought I consciously said how fucking stupid I am into this. That's how I thought I was. Maybe someday I can reach this person's uh, level of fucking, I don't know what, wokeness. I don't even know what that was. That's just one of those things, you know, when you run into a person like that, you say, yeah, you just, the best thing, you just agree with them. Oh, okay. Is that how it works? Okay. Just let them walk off feeling like they did something. Um, anyway, advice. Um, uh, by the way, can more people like that please write in? Um, advice. Hey, Bill, fucking love your podcast, bro. Uh, been a fan for years through your stand ups and movies, etc. I have an issue, Bill. I myself am black and am dating a white woman. Oh, Jesus, why would you do that? Who has an interracial child? Uh, parentheses, not a problem. Okay, the problem is the way her kid behaves. I was just fucking with the white chick thing, by the way. Okay, the problem is the way her kid behaves. I was brought up in the whoop your kid era uh, that we as a society have forgotten. Yeah, I don't think you want to do that. You don't do that. The kid is four and seems to get away with murder, talking back, acting out, the whole nine, you know. I really like this woman, but she seems to get upset when I mention anything about her kid's behavior, like it's normal or some shit. I wasn't brought up that way, so his behavior bothers me. Just thinking about his behavior is bothering me, too. So should I stick it out and just deal with it, or should I say fuck that and move on? Uh, Thanks for listening, and stay funny. Hope I hear this on your podcast, you ginger bastard. Um, I say you say fuck it and move on. Because if I think you really had feelings for this woman, that would have come up. And you would have said, you know, I really like this person. I'm really, I love her. I'm really into her. I, I, this is just something that I'm just worried is going to be. You didn't say any of that. You're just like, yeah, I'm dating this white broad. She's got an interracial kid, not a problem, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but as far as if you do decide to stick around, okay, you don't need to hit kids. You should never hit kids. That's not a good way to do it. You just have to remember the kid's four and can't reach the food. So you have all the power. All right? I'm not saying starve him either. I'm just using that as an example that you are totally controlling the environment. But if you're dealing with this woman who you, you know, sounds like you're having a good time banging her, but I don't see like you're into her. Um, but if it, if it moves on to another level, then uh, at the very least, the kid has to respect you. And you can do that. Without raising your voice, you can do that without inflicting pain. You can do it without starving them, but you just you just don't tolerate it. Like, you know, when they start whining and crying, you just you don't even address it. Let them have that little hissy fit, flip out, and then whatever they hissy fitting and flipping out about, you still don't give them. And then just say to them, like, why would I give you whatever they tell you? I, I want an ice cream. Why would I give you ice cream after you just behave like that? Because I want it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, you're, ne- you're never going to get ice cream when you behave like that. And that's how it is. Now, you can go deal with that now and go flip out and throw yourself on the couch. I don't give a fuck. Okay? You're not strong enough to open the fridge. So you're not getting it until you behave the way you need to be behaving. Um, so that's what I do if you stick around. But, I mean, just the way you wrote about her, I, w- I, would, I would move on. Uh, all right. Masturbating or cheating? Hey, Bill Burrington. Uh, Burlington Raincoat Factory. Um, Burlington Coat Factory. I got it. Oh, Burlington. You did, you did have the L in there. I couldn't see it. Hey, Billy Burlington Coat Factory. Raincoat Factory. Uh, for your love of raincoats over umbrellas. Oh, I love a raincoat. Um, I live in Florida, and to me, a man who uses either is a little limp-wristed. Oh, yeah, you got those steel balls hanging off the back of your truck. Um, But that is an old school guy thing, that if you actually dress for the weather, that makes you a pussy. You always have to act like it's a nice spring day. 
Uh, but moving on to ask your advice. I've been waiting with, oh, I've been with my fiance for eight years now. And even before dating, I had become bored with regular, regularly watching porn online masturbation. So one day, 10 years ago, I discovered online dating sites. Oh, boy. And started to talk to women I met online <clears throat> on the phone. <clears throat> Sorry. And it would eventually, where the hell is it? Da, 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 led to phone sex. Ever since then, masturbating by myself is uninteresting and unfulfilling. I've continued this practice since being exclusive with my current fiance and was wondering if it's considered cheating. Uh, that's always an easy question. If you told her you were doing this, how would she react? <laughs> I never used my real name and haven't updated my pics since initially signing up 10 years ago and never met any of the women offline. I use them for phone sex as long as possible. And then when they want to move things further along, I stop speaking to them. <laughs> I've never cheated on any previous girlfriends in my life and was wondering your thoughts on this. Thanks in advance. P.S. I love the podcast and go fuck yourself. Yeah, talk to a therapist. Talk to a therapist. One of the problems that is developed in this age of technology is, yeah, you're addicted to phone sex. And yeah, in you know, I had like a porn addiction that I, had just, I finally realized, hey, I'm fucking doing this all the time. This is how you know you're addicted to porn. If you try to jerk off with just your thoughts and it, you can't make it happen, you got a fucking problem that needs to be addressed. So I would talk to a professional and just say you have a problem and I would nip this in the, in the bud. Is that how you say it? I always forget. Butt or bud. Nip it in the bud and just fucking uh, um, handle this shit before you get married. Uh, because... Living a life like that is going to wear on you and you're going to feel like a piece of shit. So um, I wouldn't do that. I mean, how would you like it if she was doing that? Would you consider that not cheating? You know, of course you would. What you're doing is wrong. Um, so I, I would talk to, I would go to a therapist and talk to them and they will fucking help it out. And you don't need to be embarrassed. They have heard every fucking thing in the world. And what you have here is like is like a misdemeanor compared to what the fuck they hear every goddamn day. And they'll help you through it, and you'll you'll be back to being a really sort of a normal person. Because this whole fucking thing, jerking off using technology, is is if you really think about it, is goes against the laws of nature because it did not exist for ninety nine percent of the time that human beings have been on Earth. And I feel like we are all the lab rats of it right now. And um, I feel like in the future, people are going to be way more careful about what they watch, way more careful about everything, and way more like monitoring it. We're back in the day, you know, you had a bottle of scotch in the bottom fucking desk drawer. You know, Mary, I was, Mary Tyler Moore, she'd come in, oh, Mr. Grant, she'd be all upset, and he'd fucking pour her a drink. <laughs> he did that today, that'd be the end of your fucking career, so... Um, you know, this shit is just sort of like, you know, when cocaine first came out, doctors said it was no more addicting than caffeine. And then a bunch of people ruined their lives over it. So don't ruin your life over this. You got a great person that you want to marry. You owe it to them and yourself. Go to a therapist, work it out. And I think you'll be fine. Um, all right. Advice on divorced parents. Uh, dear Billy Nia's. Box breaker. Oh, Jesus. Uh, love your comedy and hope things are well with Nia and the kids. I have a problem I could use some advice with. My father divorced my mother after 18 years of marriage. I was nine years old. I'm 23 now. My father told us he left her for the way she approached parenting. So she'd yell when trying to get us to do something and other examples I won't get into. My mother believes my father cheated on her and left. This might be true since he entered a relationship immediately after filing for divorce. Yeah, that's usually a red flag. But I honestly don't know. Since then, I've been, I've been great. I've built great relationships with both and love them very much. Here's my problem. During the divorce, my father claims my mother took a substantial amount of ammunition and ammunition loading components. He manufactures his own ammos out of spent casings, which are valued very light, very highly especially now during the pandemic. My father always mentioned wanting to get it all back, 
I'd like to see it return since both my father and I are avid shooters and it's something we bonded over. While I never seen this stuff at my mother's place after she show, sold the original house, I wouldn't put a pastor to have taken it. I just don't know how to bring it up to my mother without starting any problems or causing any drama. During the divorce, things got very heated with both parents filing divorce orders, restraining orders on each other. At one point, first, my dad wasn't allowed to see my sister and I for three months, and my mother wasn't allowed to see us for a month. Any advice you can give me on how to approach this would be greatly appreciated. All right, dude, I would stay out of it. I'd stay out of it. I mean, if that's how the divorce went down and you're talking ammunition and guns, I would fucking stay out of that. That is an easy one. Um, Just stay out of it. Just listen to your dad. Yep, that sucks. Maybe someday, you know, she'll come around. But do not insert yourself in, you know. It's not your fault that they got divorced. It's not your fault that they handled the divorce the way they did. It's not your fault your mother did or didn't take the shit. You're not a gumshoe. It's not your your job, dude. Don't be taking on other people's fucking problems, even if they're your parents. Let them work that shit out. And considering they're very volatile people, this whole fucking thing's with guns and ammos and shit, I would just leave it alone. That's what I would do. All right, rhythms of comedy. What's up? What's up, Pinky? (laughs) I like that because that works in an obvious way. And then also, you know, I'm a liberal lefty, so you might think I'm a commie. I like all of that. What's up, Pinky? That's hilarious. Uh, This clip of uh, Mark Norman's stand-up to a drummer is bananas. Yeah, I love when people are able to do that. I also love Mark Norman. He's amazing. I just want you to know, I just want to know what you think of it. I'm I'm a recent fan of the show and laugh hard every episode. Go fuck yourself. I guess that's what cool kids say. Um, I'll tell you something else. There's a comedian out there, uh, Greg Hahn, who's fucking unbelievable. And then I watched him on the Bob and Tom show playing drums. He's a fucking beast. Uh, there's a lot of drum uh, comedians that play drums. Greg Hahn is fucking right up there, man. He was crushing it. Um, all right. That is it. That is the podcast. I'll let you know on Thursday how my second shot of what's the bicycles. I'll talk to you. See you.